Hi Chem students, let's talk about the concept of equilibrium again and specifically we're going to get to being able to write equilibrium expressions for any reaction we see and getting into this concept of the equilibrium constant. So uh, I just want to remind you of what we've talked about already and that is we've looked at uh, elementary reactions and if we looked at a, an elementary reaction we know that there's a forward and a reverse when we're having uh, an equilibrium and what that means is A's are breaking apart into two B's plus C's, but as we start to accumulate some of these B's and C's, they may collide and go the reaction in the opposite direction if energy and all that allows this to occur. That said, we defined equilibrium as this point when the rate of A breaking apart to make the products was equal to the rate in which the reverse reaction happened where the products collided and formed A. And then we were easy, it was easy to go ahead and, <clears throat> and, and create a, if this is equal, then we could write their rates immediately because they were elementary steps. So the forward rate was Kf, the forward rate constant times A, and then we did the same for the reverse. And then we rearranged it in such a way that we ended up getting a, a ratio of the forward reactant, uh, forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant. We decided to do that and everyone has followed suit ever since. So that is the way you do this. It's always the forward rate constant over the reverse. But it turns out those are just two constants. So we can call this new constant, this new ratio of constants here, that just, we're going to rewrite that and just call it capital K. So our rate constants are lowercase, this is a rate constant. But our equilibrium constant, this thing's called an equilibrium constant, and we often use, almost everyone uses EQ to represent equilibrium. That's going to be a capital letter, capital K. Well, the question then begs, <clears throat> what about bulk reactions? Can we do this for a bulk reaction? And the answer you should have in your mind is, no, we, we can't do that because those don't use the stoichiometry. They don't use the stoichiometry to create their rate laws. However, we're very fortunate in that nature has provided us this situation. When we're at equilibrium, even a bulk reaction has this property. So there's something special about equilibrium that elementary and bulk reactions behave the same way when they're at equilibrium. So we, we can write an equilibrium expression for any reaction using the same thing. So let's back up again. And what did we do? Our equilibrium expression, right here, our equilibrium uh, constant was equal to the product of our uh, the product of our product concentrations raised to their power divided by the product of the reactant concentrations raised to their stoichiometric power. So that is our that's how we're going to do every one of these from now on. We're always going to write it as products over reactants, and that whole thing is called the uh, equilibrium expression. So here's some generic reaction. We would say then our equilibrium expression we would write that as this. K is equal to the concentration of C to the C power, D to the D power, divided by A to the A power, and B to the B power. So try the example here real quick. Go ahead and uh, pause the video and give it a try and, and I will also then bring up in a few seconds uh, the answer that I have. So as you see the uh, rate con the equilibrium constant is the concentration of ammonia squared divided by the concentration of our diatomic nitrogen and divided by our concentration of our uh, diatomic hydrogen all cubed. All right, so what we've just found is this, that um, so what we've just found out is that at equilibrium we know that the rate forward is equal to the rate reverse and so if we looked at some reaction like A goes to B um, in this that, that, that I show here, if you take a good look at this, every time an A turns into a B at equilibrium, a B will be turning into an A. So the concentration of A will decrease every time the forward reaction happens and the concentration of B will increase every time the forward reaction happens. However, while that's occurring, the concentration of B will also decrease 
because it's going back and the reverse reaction is happening and then voila the concentration of A goes up. So we've just found out that at equilibrium we find out something very interesting and that is at equilibrium the concentrations of all of our materials of our reactants and products these concentrations are constant that's right they stop changing because well they actually do change a little bit here's what's going on the molecule called A turns into a B but another molecule uh, called B turns into an A so the reactions are continuing, continually happening so this is called a dynamic equilibrium the equilibrium the reactions keep going however the concentrations stay constant because every time an A is used a B is created a B is created and every time a B is used an A is created and those two processes are happening simultaneously so we now have two definitions of equilibrium at our disposal um, and there's more to come and we want to know all these and keep track of them first off we said that when the rate forward of a reaction is equal to the reverse rate of the reaction that's equilibrium and now we can say that when the concentration of all the species is constant that we're also at equilibrium so now that we know how uh, what equilibrium is let's go about and try to compute a few of these equilibrium constants so here's an example of a, of, a, of a model where we have some system with some A's and B's in it and the reaction is 2A goes to B and we're going to say that it's at equilibrium and when you see this this is an important thing it tells you that the concentrations are no longer changing right so if we're at equilibrium we can write an equilibrium expression for it we can write and put in numbers maybe and calculate an equilibrium constant uh, each one of these symbols for A that we see here in our box represents one mole every symbol for B also rep represents one mole of B therefore we have the number of moles of everything that's in the container and we're also told the volume is equal to two liters so the question is what's the equilibrium constant for this reaction and the way to go about answering this question is to first remember that our equilibrium expression is something we can write no matter what we know so no matter what we know we can say oh the equilibrium expression for this particular reaction is the concentration of B divided by the concentration of A squared. So for this all we have to do is find out what is B. And so if I calculate this it's going to be there's one, two, three moles of B and that happens to be in two liters. So that is 1.5 molar for B and the same thing can be done for A. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, four moles divided by the 2.00 liters and that's going to be 2.00 molar so this really should have one more significant digit alright so now that I have those I'm going to move them out of the way so I can just continue on with my other expression I'm going to grab this and move it on over I now have the concentrations let's plug those in so I would go here and I would say I have 1.50 molar divided by 2.00 molar squared and when I get done that answer and the answer to this is 0 0.375 and at this point I'm gonna give you an interesting property of equilibrium constants and that is equilibrium constants do not have units it seems like it should have units I know that you're seeing this and going you always harp on units well those molarities and stuff they they seem to be there they don't seem to be canceling out but just trust me on this they don't have units and so you never have to write units for any equilibrium constant that you ever see and, and I don't really want to go into why that's a more advanced topic so uh, just trust in that uh, you've got something simple here you don't have to worry about points being removed for taking off not having units so the equilibrium constant here is 0.375. In 10 minutes, the equilibrium constant will be 0.375. In five years, the equilibrium constant for this reaction will be 0.375. It's a constant, so it stays that way at all times, unless, of course, we change the temperature, which we'll get into later in the semester. 
So one last chance to take a look at this and, and, and see if we understand what's going on. This graph below is taken for some generic reaction, X goes to Y, and the container originally contained two molar of X only. So what's the value of the equilibrium constant? So here we're gonna learn how, to, how did this come about if you look at it in the graph. And the first thing we have to do is say, well, what's the equilibrium expression gonna be? Well, it's gonna be K is equal to the concentration of Y divided by the concentration of X. But which concentration? Is it this initial concentration right here? No, these are the concentrations when we're at equilibrium. So we have to find where we think on this graph equilibrium has been established. And we have to remember our definitions. The rate forward is equal to the rate reverse, or the concentrations have become constant. Well, as we watch this graph of whatever substance this is, the concentration is changing this whole time and then it levels off. Where it levels off, that is when it becomes constant. So this is essentially when we've reached equilibrium. As you see, the other, the other chemical that's involved, it also leveled off at the same spot. That has to be the case because equilibrium is reached by all the species in the, in the container at the same time. That said, we can now, if we can identify which of these lines represents which graph, we'll be able to then calculate an equilibrium constant. Here's how. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say the, the problem told us the container originally contained only X. That means this line right here is X because there's the two molar of X. There's no Y initially in the container. Okay, so I've now identified which graph represents which. So now to find the concentration of X, all I have to do is back this up and go back across. It looks like it's 1.25. Do you see that? It's equal to 1.25 molar. The concentration of Y looks like it's equal to 0.75 molar. And from that, I can now calculate my equilibrium constant. It's equal to 0.75 molar divided by 1.25 molar. Remember when I get done, I don't have any units on this thing. And my answer is 0.60 all right, so that's how we can obtain an equilibrium constant from graphical data. We also saw from experimental analysis. And so this is essentially getting the composition of the equilibrium mixture, uh, and that's what this information is here at the end. That's the composition of our equilibrium mixture. We can use that to obtain an equilibrium constant.